Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Sam Bankman Freed's sentencing is coming out. He is sentenced to 25 years in prison after being convicted of fraud over the FTX collapse. Again, he's been sentenced to 25 years in prison uh, after being convicted of fraud over the FTX collapse. Not the Bernie Madoff nope. situation, but then not the 10, 11 years of sort of the lower white collar crime. Yeah, the, 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 the defense was asking for, you know, six and a half uh, to seven years. And mm-hmm. again, the defense, uh, the prosecution was looking for something in the 40 to 50 percent range, so maybe splitting the difference. Hey, Barry, just, let, you know, we got about a minute left here. Just put into context if you can in the context of Bankman Freed his sentencing here for 25 years yeah what's your sure. reaction what's your reaction so so you know I'm I'm more in the Michael Lewis camp than in than in I, I love uh, Zeke Fox's book but the you know when you look at everybody having recovered all of their assets the story perfect example of narrative fallacy the story of this guy is a genius who has has figured out how to make crypto uh, modernized and then oh it turns out that they're commingling funds yep and they're kind of running everything on on the fly it, it's amazing how one narrative story failed and was replaced uh, by another this is very similar to Theranos and what happens there we, we love these stories and they yep. often deceive us yep absolutely hey Barry thank you so much for joining us Barry Ritholtz host of Masters in Business on Bloomberg Radio and the founder of Ritholtz Wealth Management again uh, the key data point here uh, as uh, Alex just mentioned, Sam Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison, uh, ordered to four foot more than $11 uh, billion. Uh, let's bring in June Grasso, uh, Bloomberg's legal analyst. She joins us here in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio. Initial reactions, June? Well, I think it's a very tough sentence, but it was expected. The judge Kaplan, before the trial, said that he increased the sentencing guideline range because he found that Sam Bankman-Fried had perjured himself at his trial. He found that he committed witness tampering. If you remember, he put him into prison before trial, despite this huge bail package, because he felt that he was tampering with a witness. And uh, he said there was a loss to investors of $1.7 billion, despite the fact that people have said that the investors are going to get paid back, most of them. He said something that I thought was kind of, it was chilling. So the defense was saying, look, let him out early. He could be like a Michael Milken. He can come back because he has, he wants to do good in the world. He has this ability. And the judge said that there's a risk that, that this man will be in a position to do something very bad in the future. And it's not a trivial risk. Part of my sentence will be for the purpose of disabling him to the extent that it can be appropriately done to him for a significant period of time. So the judge just didn't buy his good Mm -hmm. intentions. He said his intentions were to gain power. But on the flip side, I mean, he wasn't sentenced to 150 years. So like he will still have a life when he gets out, right? Just If you're just joining us now, Sam Bankman Freed is sentenced 25 years in prison. He will also uh, be ordered to forfeit more than $11 billion. So... Presumably, like, do you serve that whole 25 years? You serve 85% of the time. And no one, no, the the request from the Bureau of Probation for 100 years was ludicrous. No yeah. one would be sentenced to that. I mean, think about Bernie Madoff. That's like a worse scam that, that you can think of. So um, he was like, he's like the high end of the scale. The government was asking for 40 to 50 years. That's also very high. I mean, you know, think about what happened here. But I think the judge is also trying to send a message to, you know, this has been called the greatest financial fraud in U.S. history by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. So the judge is trying to send a message. But this judge has been so tough through the entire trial. If you remember, before Bankman Freed testified, he had him on the stand for three hours outside the presence of the jury. He denied almost all of the requests that the defense made for motions to introduce different defenses that he wanted to to present to the jury, different expert witnesses. So he's been tough on him since mm. the very beginning. But I, you know, I thought he should get 10 years, so maybe he'll get 20 years. In point of fact, he got okay. 25 years. Interesting. Do we know what type of facility he will serve this time in? Is this a I, you know, minimum, maximum. Where, where do they send? Yeah, I mean, people? really, he's a he's a white collar criminal. There's right. all kinds of evidence that in when he's been in prison and he's been in Rikers, yep. that he's been helping to teach some of the inmates to help with their G, GED diplomas, okay. and that his one of his uh, roommates, shall we say, yep. his <laughs> cellmates, is a former um, police officer, and he said that you know he really is 
getting along well in prison and he's trying to make you know do the best he can I don't it, this will be up to the Bureau of Prisons it's not going to be up to the judge where okay. he goes so they're going to do a report after this and determine and also I think he might go to a facility in California so he could be near his Close family and, and just to reiterate, if you're just joining us, FTX co-founder Sam Bankman fried has now been sentenced to 25 years in prison for stealing billions of dollars from customers, marking the final chapter in this case that has just captivated pretty much everybody. He also has been um, ordered to forfeit $11 billion. What happens now? Is there any other thing? Yes. Appeal, convo, what happens next? There is an appeal. I mean, the defense is going to appeal this. Appeals are very hard in criminal cases, and a lot of the decisions that the judge made are considered within a trial judge's discretion. So it's a difficult appeal, but yes, they're going to appeal. He's hired new lawyers. He changed his lawyers from the trial. So he has, representing him now, Mark Mukasey, who's a very well-known criminal defense attorney. He represented Trevor Milton and got him a sentence of four years when the prosecution wanted 11 years. <laughs> so uh, he didn't... So he, would he be appealing the verdict or just the sentence? The verdict. He oh. will be appealing oh, the okay. verdict, what okay. happened at trial, the, you know, the charges, the different... For example, what I just said, the judge didn't allow him all these different expert witnesses that he wanted to testify to present defenses, and the judge cut all that off. So that will be, I think, the basis of the appeal, and... Um, you know, whatever the defense can can I mean, drag up. I've also seen things like people are getting their money back, the recovery rate is going to be okay, uh, he has autism, he can't right. feel the happiness, judge said that. like that should be reduced. Like, did, well, does that hold water? Like, what is that? Well, that's what the defense argued. The judge said he is a high, very high-achieving autistic person, which means he's capable of huge accomplishments. But then he turned that around and said, wait, we have to be careful of those accomplishments. He's a dangerous mm. person. So that was almost used against him by the mm -hmm. judge. That's but yeah, there was, there, were, there was letters to the judge about his autism and how that makes him socially awkward. They had experts testifying about it, but the judge didn't buy it. The defense also brought up the fact that most of the investors, it looks like, are going to be made whole. The judge didn't buy that either, yeah. despite the judge said that, um, he said that, uh, his real, let me see, just that he found that the loss to investors was uh, $1.7 and that the fact that they'll be paid in full is misleading, it's logically flawed, and it's speculative. So everything that the defense put out there, the judge just rejected. So next steps here are they, he goes back to this this federal this de penitentiary or, you know, i guess the detention center in brooklyn i think he will go back there for a bit until they decide you know where he's going to be in prison and where his, where he's going to serve his sentence and in the meantime you know it takes a while for an appeal to go through you have to get all the documents and the the trial transcripts and everything so that's going to be a while then the next thing we'll hear about probably is his where he's going to spend his sentence and yep. also you know what the appeal is going to be about that'll probably be you know months and months maybe a year down the road Hey, uh, joining us also in our Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio, Peter Jeffrey joins us, Bloomberg legal editor. Uh, Jeffrey, what do you, what's your takeaway from this sentence of 25 years? Oh, well, you could tell as the judge prepared, uh, delivered his remarks before pronouncing the sentence that it was going to be very stiff. Nothing like the six and a half that the defense asked for, but not at the range of the 40 to 50 the government wanted. It was sort of right in the middle. The judge hit him with 300 months. We did some quick calculations. It was 25 years. And it is just what the judge intended to do. It's a stiff deterrent to anybody who plays outside the lines in a sensitive area like crypto. And as you were saying, the judge just had no patience for the nonetheless excellent defense uh, 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 sentencing statement that his lawyer Mukasey made. It was, it was one of the best we'd heard. And yeah. yet the judge thought, this won't fly. Look at what he did. And he didn't believe mm -hmm. he said that he was sorry, but the judge said he has no apparent remorse. So he didn't yes. believe the words that were coming out of SBF's mouth. That this, I mean, he made a, a statement, a 20 minute statement, in which he said that, you know, he was sorry for what happened. I, I'm sorry about what happened. It haunts me every day. I made a series of bad decisions. They weren't selfish decisions, they weren't selfless decisions, they were bad decisions. And the mm -hmm. judge just. Yeah. Didn't believe anything. And he maybe said. most strikingly to me, the judge said, 
I've got to give you a sentence that is going to make sure you are not out on the street doing this again anytime soon. So we were all sitting around thinking, well, he's 32. That yep. means he's getting at least 20. And, you know, it's not a violent crime, but the judge was talking in terms, almost in terms of the violence Bankman Free did to investors, customers, employees. Yeah. With, so uh, yeah. If you're just joining us, we just want to update you on the news. FTX co-founder Sam Bankman-Fried has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for stealing billions of dollars from customers. He's also been ordered to remit about $11 billion. As we just did some quick math there, he'll be 57 now uh, when he gets out of prison. Uh, joining us here uh, is Peter Jeffrey, Bloomberg legal editor. Uh, joins us in June Grasso, a Bloomberg legal analyst. Peter, can you give us some just perspective and background here on this kind of sentencing, these kind of cases, and kind of how we get here? Well, just thinking about it, Elizabeth Holmes got a little over 11 years for the Theranos fraud. Peter, I'm going to need you to talk into the mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Elizabeth Holmes got it. <laughs> that, that would help, right? Yeah, got better, more than 11 years for the Theranos fraud. Bernie Madoff, 150. And so um, this one is a stiff sentence that, as the judge suggested, I mean, you know, we did the math. Like, like you said, he'll be 57 when he gets out. And, There's still um, life after 57. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Paul is a perfect example. Perfect example. But, yeah, but right, if you're looking for a sentence that will stop somebody from pursuing this kind of fraud again, a uh, quarter of a century will do it. All right. So, uh, June, I, give us a sense of timing just as to the appeal. It's hard to it's hard to say how long the appeal will take because they have to it's it's up to the defense to prepare the papers and to but I mean I think it'll be months maybe I mean even a year Peter I don't it know. could be yeah it could be a year um, of course they'll be trying to put it in faster but and then the prosecution gets a chance to respond it's a long long process he'll have served years before we hear about what the appeal result is and I mean I don't think I mean I think it's going to be a hard appeal to make. Well, I mean, the eleven billion dollars also June. Like, wh where is that? Like, is, well, I don't know where that is. Does he? Ha I don't think he has eleven billion. He's not supposed to have eleven All billion right. at this point. All right, we're going to continue this conversation, but we're going to hand it off to our good friend Joe Matthew, Balance of Power. Joe's down in Washington D.C., and we're going to keep uh, June uh, and uh, Peter as well. So, uh, Joe, big uh, news here coming out of Lower Manhattan. That's for sure, Paul. Thanks. Of course, a story that's resonated here in Washington for a lot of different reasons and continues to. When we talk about crypto on Capitol Hill, the idea of regulating this, the stand that lawmakers take uh, on this issue. I'm glad to have Kaylee Lines at my side today. Kaylee has actually been covering uh, this SBF story from the very beginning, remembering she was hosting our crypto show uh, when that began and has since uh, come down to Washington to cover financial regulations and, of course, crypto. Kaylee, this is, uh, this is a Washington story in a lot of ways yeah. that people might not see on the surface, knowing millions of dollars uh, were donated to candidates in, in the way that SBF tried to influence a lot of races. Yeah, Sam Bankman-Fried was incredibly politically active. He made donations on a bipartisan basis, but as you say, it was it was a significant amount of money, and he spent a lot of time physically here in Washington, actually lobbying not just on the on behalf of FTX, but he really became kind of a poster child and spokesperson for the industry, really advocating for crypto as a whole legislatively on the Hill, and a lot of lawmakers were quite burned ultimately when it turned out that FTX ultimately uh, collapsed. And that has certainly continued to resonate as we talk about the difficulty of actually getting crypto legislation through. Right. The industry has had to work a lot harder on their lobbying efforts to try to delineate FTX from everything else in the industry, mm -hmm. considering FTX was in many ways a centralized exchange, not necessarily the same decentralized model as a lot of this. But obviously this this to a certain point, will bring some closure to this Sam Bankman-Fried specific case, keeping in mind that he was initially charged with violating campaign finance yes, laws. Right. They ultimately dropped the charge. So of the seven charges he was actually convicted of mm -hmm. back in November, including conspiracy to uh, commit fraud, et cetera, uh, campaign finance violations were not in there. So this sentencing has nothing to do with his right. political activity, even if it still had implications. That's a really important point, though, certainly for the people who are interested in politics and are used to what we talk about on this program, had that uh, charge stayed in place, that could have outed a lot of people in Washington and around Certainly. the country. Certainly. Yeah, it could have brought great politically political difficulty for many individuals, not just for Sam Bankman-Fried, because yeah. theoretically, had that been added, you could be talking about a sentence beyond 25 years today. That mm -hmm. said, still this 25-year sentence is 
significantly lower than what prosecutors were asking for. Obviously, yes. they were pitching for 40 to 50 years because of the scale of this fraud mm -hmm. uh, that they were describing one of the largest in modern American financial history with over a million victims, obviously $10 billion uh, ultimately uh, in terms of the size of the fraud. But we do have to keep in mind here that Sam Bankman fried is 32 years old, as Alex and Paul and June were just discussing. So this is going to take him well into late middle age, ultimately, yeah. if this sentence stands. Obviously, there will be an appeal process, but who knows how that will shake out. It's just amazing when you think about uh, just the, the way human nature is at play in stories like these, considering the paradise he was living in. He yeah. had it made. He was in the Bahamas living the life he dreamt of. He's been since living in Rikers Island. Yeah, I mean, he was a billionaire many times over, and now, of course, as part of this, he also has not just been sentenced to 25 years in prison, but mm -hmm. forfeiting $11 billion, and unclear where that $11 Does billion dollars comes that from. Uh, all of his wealth was tied up in FTX, which right. is now uh, bankrupt, and of course, everything that can be salvaged from that bankruptcy pro that process is going to be distributed to the customers and users who had money lost in this. That, if anything, might be one of the more redeeming aspects of the argument that he and his legal team were able to make to Judge Kaplan, was that a lot of these people will ultimately get most of their money back throughout that bankruptcy broadcast, mm -hmm. uh, process. Uh, and so that may have helped him here. But yeah, the the, the journey of Sam Bankman freed from this meteoric rise mm -hmm. to one of the most well-known individuals hanging out with Giselle Bundchen and Tom Brady and yeah, right. uh, incredibly popular, certainly a well-known presence here in Washington to now someone who is going to be in prison for a very large chunk of his life. It, it's That's pretty, sure. it's a remarkable story. Uh, spending time with Kaylee Lyons here a little earlier than usual on balance of power. If you're just joining us, sentencing day for SBF and it is 25 years in prison. I think June Grasso was suggesting that that could be knocked down, but that's the headline right now. And of course, uh, to Kaylee's point, they were asking for 40 to 50 years. So just for a little bit of perspective on this, you've been saying, uh, uh, of course, asking questions, Kaylee, of lawmakers and regulators mm -hmm. about crypto since you moved to Washington. This is colored that debate in a lot of ways where lawmakers feel free to say, you know what, this is this is a home for criminal activity. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a serious investment. Before this happened, there was more momentum, it seemed, on some of these issues. Where is any of this going now? Well, it's a great question. Where it's going in the House is probably very different than ultimately the question of whether it will pass the Senate or become law. Because in the House, you do have much more advocacy for the crypto industry in some of those lawmakers, including the chair, at least for now, with the Financial Services Committee, Patrick McHenry. And that, that, that committee has advanced multiple pieces of legislation that would, in some ways, perhaps legitimize the industry more by giving them the regulatory clarity they've been asking for delineating uh, what the CFTC or the SEC uh, would have control over, including things uh, to stable coins. Not all of this, of course, related to the business that uh, FTX was conducting, but it has been used as an example for the counter arguments. Those who are more crypto skeptical uh, aren't in the majority in the House, but they are in the Senate. Sherrod Brown uh, is obviously the head of the Senate Banking Committee, has been very reluctant to talk about any of this kind of legislation in any way that isn't more critical and skeptical of the industry. And he is facing a challenger of a pro-crypto uh, advocate in his Senate race in Ohio in November, Bernie Moreno. So you're you're still seeing the, the politics around this industry playing out, and that goes well beyond just the legacy of Sam Bankman-Fried. Got you. Uh, June Grasso is standing by, a uh, host of Bloomberg Law in New York. Before we move to a conversation with Governor Gleg, uh, uh, Ned Lamont of Connecticut, I just want to bring June in on this. Specific to the sentence, June, what options does he have now? You've referred to an appeal. What happens next? Well, he ha he'll have to serve 85 percent of that sentence unless he wins on appeal. And of course, the defense is going to appeal. He has changed his lawyers since the trial. He's hired Mark Mukasey, very famous, well-known uh, former pro federal prosecutor in New York. He represented Trevor Milton and did much better on the sentence. Trevor Milton got hmm. four years as opposed to the 11 that the prosecution wanted. So the next thing is an appeal, and they'll go back through the trial there and find what they consider to be legal errors. And probably a lot of that will be some of the decisions that the judge made prior to trial even that limited, sharply limited the defenses that Sam Bankman Freed could assert at trial, limited the expert witnesses he wanted to call. He really limited his case to a great extent. So I think that will be the basis of the appeal. It will be probably years before we know what, you know, how that appeal turns out because it takes quite a bit of time to file the papers and have yeah. the responses. That's where we stand.